Hello, we are Nose of the West, and today we are teaching you how to play Planet Unknown. This is a game of tile selection, of grid building, and all along scoring some points on this wonderful Lazy Susan adventure. My name is Tom. We have a Kai. Spice. We have a Jimmy. Yes. We have a Sean. Hi. And Kai, can you tell us? what the goal of this game actually is. All right. The goal of Planet Unknown is for us as giant evil corporations to col uh, not colonize, but rather terraform and prepare a planet for humanity to escape to because we used all the resources on Earth and the easiest solution to that is to just find another planet. We are going to be battling it out for the right to set this planet up, trying to score the most victory points, which are rec rec represented I think it started with an R. Represented by these metal icons on the board. We gain those a few different ways by filling up our planet in columns and rows with terrain tiles, by completing or advancing on our resource boards, collecting life pods on the table, and completing some shared objectives where we're fighting it out with our neighbors to achieve certain things throughout the game. The game ends when either any player can no longer place a tile legally on their planet. The game ends for all players. Or if both piles of tiles in any one person's depot, which is the two piles of tiles facing their icon, any time both of those piles in any one depot runs out, the game is over for everybody. Most likely that's only going to happen in a six player game, but you never know. Uh, the way this game works, you are selecting tiles by whoever is this side, uh, the station commander, which rotates every single turn, uh, they get to spin the Susan and choose which tiles they are going to end up with. Everybody else then has to pick from the ones that end up in front of them, marked by their markers, and place them on their board. The first tile that you take has to be placed on the edge of the board, and you can rotate and flip and move things in any way that you like. Uh, every subsequent tile has to be placed orthogonally adjacent to a tile you already have on the board. Spoiler alert, there is a way that you can have to avoid that in the future. When you place a tile, you then get the bonuses from the resources you place onto the board. And there are six different kinds of tiles and five different bonuses that you will place. There are some additional things that you have to take in mind when you are placing on the board. Anything that has a meteorite symbol is going to place a meteorite onto your board, onto that tile, and meteorites will stop you from scoring the rows and columns that Kai was talking about earlier. Kai, what is the first of the resources that we can get when placing on the board? The first is sieve, represented by these cool dome habitats. When you place a sieve tile, you will go up on the sieve tracker, shown on the board here, which is the black color. As you advance, you will not only gain medals and victory points with those, but also collect sieve cards. When you go hit a sieve marker, you collect the entire pile of that relevant sieve card, level one, for example. Have a look through them, select one, which will either have an immediate bonus that you show and collect straight away, or an end game bonus, which you keep secret next to your board and get extra scoring at the end of the game. On that same tracker, you also have these cool little pinwheels, which might be a little bit tricky to see on the top down, but little pinwheels showing the other colors of the board. Those are called synergy markers. If you hit a synergy marker, you get to go up on any one of the other tracks at the same time and get its bonuses. Synergy, corporate buzzwords. <laughs> Yo. Uh, worth noting that there are two resources on each tile and you will get to choose which order that you go up on them and thereby combo into different things, which is important because the second tile that you can place is water. Water. Uh, is very important in space travel, especially when there is only a limited amount of water on the planets that you have already. Uh, water will only move up on its track when you place it covering at least one planetary ice. That is the blue areas on the planet. Uh, there is a way that water will go up when it's not covering, but we'll come to that in a moment. Worth noting that water is the highest scoring of all the tracks. If you do get it to the top, it is worth 10 whole points. Thirdly, next up is biomass, represented by these little green watchtower thingamajigs. Biomass is greenery, plants, life. And when you uh, place a biomass icon and ca carry on up the biomass tracker, you'll get those synergy markers that I discussed before, but also these cool little biomass markers, which will give you a biomass token, which basically functions as a one space tile that you can place on your board which is gonna come really in handy if you end up boxed in and have a one tile 
or a two tile space that's going to be tricky to fill, biomass is the answer. There is a way to get biomass and store it until the end so you can fill up exactly the ones you need. Otherwise, you do have to place it immediately. Uh, fourth is my favorite track of the game. This is the rover track. This is where you will get to place a rover. If you ever get on a symbol that has a little rover icon, you will place a rover tile immediately onto anywhere on the tile that you have just placed. In this instance, if I've placed this tile, I can place it onto the water. Rovers are useful because they will travel around your planet and go through all the lovely places and pick up those meteorites that have landed on your tiles, thereby removing them. Each uh, meteorite that you collect, every three meteorites, gets you one victory point at the end, but most importantly, clears them off of your track, off of your board, so that you can score those points. Additionally, rovers can collect life pods, and each life pod you collect is worth one victory point at the end. These are these lovely blue chunky boys here. Uh, you want to collect them for victory points, however, you can end up crushing them. If you end up placing a tile on top of a life pod or on top of a rover, they are immediately destroyed. Uh, rovers, you will collect two of them, most likely if you're playing the base game throughout the game, uh, and you will gain movement the more you climb up the track. Each time you cover up a number on the rover track, you get that much movement that can be spread between any number of rovers that you have. There are also some points to collect along the way. The fifth track, the final track. Lastly is tech. The gray one. Here's one I didn't prepare earlier. Tech is the final tracker. As you move up the tech track, you have synergy, but you also have these little spaces that say level one, level two, level three, level four, and level five, which are some special abilities shown on the side of the board here that just get better and better. And once you've unlocked them, you then have access to that ability for the rest of the game. For uh, example, the first one is the tile adjacent placement is no longer necessary. You can place a tile anywhere you want on the board. Uh, you still have to place water onto water, but if you get up to the fourth level, double water advancement from placing a tile. It's gonna be great. Tech is a lot of fun. It lets you play uh, the game in a variety of different ways. Worth noting today, we are playing with just the base game, which means we all have the same planet and the exact same um, Corporation. Corporation, but each of these is double-sided, so you have a different planet with different ways to play. This one has a lot more water, and your corporations have different sides of them with all kinds of weird and wonderful ways to interact with the game. The final weird and wonderful way to interact with the game is your energy tiles. I'm going to pick a different one because that one doesn't want to come out. Energy is a wild. It will give you the bonus of anything it is touching. So if this is the first tile that you place for the game, uh, this is touching a water tile, so you would get to go up on the water track, even if neither of these is covering a planetary ice. Energy works slightly differently to everything else because the energy area can be continuous and congruent. And if you place an energy tile out, you can get the bonus of any resource that is touching any of your congruent energy tiles. So in this case, you could get greenery even though you place this tile all the way up there. As Kai said, the game will continue until somebody cannot place a tile or a depot is empty. You still get the bonus from the final tile that you pick, even if you can't place it. So if your board is full, you will still get to pick a bonus and go up on those resources. At the end of the game, you count up the points you get from your board, from your bonuses between each person, the uh, uh, objectives, uh, and then the points that you have received on both your corporation board and any of the uh, cards, the sieve cards that you have collected on the way. I believe that hits everything. I think so. If you are more of a visual learner, you can join us because we are playing this live. You can come and watch that in the future, or you can join us live for any other board game that we play in the future. We are Nezalus, we do this every single week. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you next time. <laughs>